Hello everyone. Uh, in the previous part of our discussion, we had been uh, talking about the minor symmetries and near the end of the previous lecture, I had mentioned that these minor symmetries can be utilized to, uh, to, uh, to write down the relation between the stresses and the strains through this elasticity uh, tensor in a simpler fashion on a piece of paper or on a screen using something which is referred to as the void notation. Okay, so let's take a look at what the what this void notation is. It's rather useful and it's widely used. Uh, so in this void notation, the following mappings are used. So it may sound very mathematical, these mappings are used, but uh, uh, the idea is really quite simple. So whenever we have this kind of a uh, index pair like uh, 1 1 appearing okay uh, what we say is that this can be mapped to just 1 similarly when we have the index pair 2 2 appearing this can be mapped to just Two, just as a shorthand way of writing okay so similarly 3 3 can be mapped to 3 next if we have 2 3 then we have seen that in the if 2 3 is sitting in the first two positions or in the third and fourth position then within this first two positions it can be interchanged so, okay, so as part of the first two indices or as part of the third and fourth place in the, uh, in the, in the subscripts of this the elasticity tensor and this thing can be mapped to or is mapped to 4 in the void notation. Next, the index pair 1, 3 equivalent to 3, 1 is mapped to 5 and the index pair 1 2 equivalent to 2 1 is mapped to 6. Please note uh, again that when I am saying that these things can be uh, are equivalent I mean to say that they are equivalent only as part of the, the, the acceptable interchangeability sitting in the 1 2 places or the three fourth places okay the first two places or the third and fourth place similarly here only if they are sitting in the first two places or in the third and fourth place of the of this uh, the elasticity tensor only then that is possible okay now with this knowledge what can we uh, do what's what uh, uh, what benefit does it afford us so first of all let's take a look at the stress tensor what we have for the stress tensor is the familiar sigma 1 1 sigma 1 2 sigma 1 3 sigma uh, 2 1 we can write but we know that sigma 2 1 is equal to sigma 1 2 so we'll just write that as sigma 1 2 sigma 2 2 uh, sigma 2 3 sigma 1 3 sigma 2 3 sigma 3 3 this we have written so many times earlier now this uh, matrix representation it can be mapped utilizing this particular mapping this these all these mappings to a single column vector I repeat this 3 by 3 matrix representation it can be mapped to a single column uh, matrix okay so it works like this that this Sigma 1 1 goes to Sigma 1 okay uh, this Sigma 2 2 it goes to the second row here this one to the third place to the third row here Next, you note the sigma 2, 3 that is mapped to 4. So 2, 3 is here or here. So that comes here. Next is the sigma, the 1, 3 or the 3, 1, which is in this first row, third column or this third row, first column that comes here as sigma 5. And finally, the sigma 1, 2, the sigma 1, 2 here that comes to sigma 6. So this is. The mapping okay
Similarly, in, in exactly the same fashion, uh, for the strain tensor also, we have this. Epsilon uh, 2 2, epsilon 2 3, epsilon 1 3, epsilon 2 3, epsilon 3 3. And this can again be written as epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, where each of these respectively denote our map from epsilon 1 1 epsilon 2 2 and epsilon 3 3 for epsilon 4 4 or epsilon 4 what we uh, what we're mapping is from this epsilon 2 3 for epsilon 5 we are mapping from epsilon 1 3 and finally for epsilon 6 we are mapping from the epsilon 1 2 okay, so exactly like the stress tensor that's it now comes the question of the elasticity tensor. So, uh, as you can imagine, uh, writing out all the 36 different components, okay, because we have based on the minor symmetries only reduced the 81 uh, different components to, to, to 36 components, but even then, writing the 36 components would be, uh, well, quite a task. So, let me just give you a couple of examples. But suppose we have this particular uh, component C1122 then this gets mapped to C12 and just to note that we are indeed writing in the void notation we can put this bar over here okay so if you want you can go back and put a bar over here also no problem okay just to denote that we are indeed writing in the void notation similarly here you can put a bar, bar over these epsilons no problem uh, so this is the usual way of writing it. Another example, um, let's say the 1, 2, 3, 3, that gets mapped to uh, C bar, this 1, 2 is 6. Okay, we can just check quickly here. This 1, 2 is 6, it's getting mapped to 6. And this 3, 3 is just 3. Okay, so suppose instead, we had C2133 that would also be 6 bar 63. Okay, no problem there. Okay, now uh, what can we do uh, once we have this? Okay, what is the real utility of this? Let's just read it in the things, but what is the real utility of this void notation? Well, you see, uh, writing a fourth order tensor in terms in, in a matrix form, well, it's not possible on a piece of paper. Okay, it's hard to even imagine it. Okay, you can imagine a third order tensor in the form of a, of a, of a, of a like a Rubik's cube, of a 3 into 3 Rubik's cube kind of thing. Uh, but uh, how do you visualize a fourth order tensor? Okay, it's difficult. Uh, there are certain uh, ways of thinking about it, but let's not get into that right now. But uh, now that we are actually dealing with a fourth order tensor, and this is something real, okay, the connection between stress and strain is something real, and we do want to write it on a piece of paper in a convenient fashion. So this void notation is what is going to help us out. So you see, because we have managed to write down these 36 different constants, these 36 different independent components of the, of the elasticity tensor uh, using this alternative void notation, what we can do is we can actually connect uh, or write down the relation like this. So, as usual, we write the stress tensor on the left hand side. I'm still referring to this as the stress tensor because that is what it is, except written in an alternative or different fashion. Okay, whatever I have written in this form of a column matrix is still very much the stress tensor. Okay, all the six independent components of stress are here, and this can be written. The elasticity tensor can be written as a six by six matrix. So this is where the trick is, or this is where the real utility of the void notation is. Okay, I again reiterate that uh, the we have already seen that based on the minor symmetries, 
the uh, elasticity tensor has basically 36 independent components and those 36 independent components because it is 36 six, it is six six squared uh, we can actually write them down as a six into six matrix so uh, this will take some effort but we'll do this at least for once okay so c11 part uh, so writing this in this way is laborious but it gives us a clear cut idea of what is going on okay c13 bar c14 bar c15 bar or c bar 16 okay now uh, this is very very important it is extremely important we might be tempted to write here like c bar to 1 but we should not do this okay okay so we should not write this as c bar to 1 and you will see in a moment why so uh, this is not a c bar 1 2 okay so this is c bar 2 and this is this is uh, okay so these two things are completely different that's what i want to emphasize okay we must be writing this as c 2 1 bar not as c 1 2 bar okay at least not yet next this is c bar 2 2 proceeding similarly so uh, let me just quickly complete it so again i must be writing this as c bar 3 1 instead uh, i should not be writing this as c bar 1 3 just because uh, we have this thing here we should not be doing that okay so these are separate things at least right now again the same conda so Uh, I will need another row here. Uh, so let me just adjust this a little bit. right so let me just adjust this bracket a little bit just to make it look nice uh, there we go okay and this one is just the one column matrix uh, representing the string tensor so epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon 3 epsilon 4 uh, sorry about that epsilon 5 epsilon 6 okay again i'm noting that if you want you can write these with the bars okay this, these strain comp the stress components and the strain components you can write them as bars no problem but you note that uh, in the process of doing this thing uh, we have missed out one okay so uh, as written this relations are not quite correct okay so what we are missing uh, here really is a factor of two in the string uh, relations okay so uh, i'll make this correction here that uh, maybe i use a different color just to highlight the fact that uh, in these string relations or in these positions if this is epsilon 3 that's not a problem but here i need to have 
a twice, a twice, and a twice here. Okay, so uh, if you can visualize everything in your head, you will be able to see why this must be so. Uh, or what you can do is you can actually write this out in in detail. Okay, and you will see. Okay, so uh, it's it's something like this that uh, when you are actually uh, when you are actually uh, multiplying this out. Okay, so uh, you have the contributions uh, from the epsilon 2 3 as well as from the epsilon 3 2 here also you have the contribution from the epsilon 1 3 and the epsilon 3 1 so unless you put the 2 here those are, don't get accounted for that's the issue okay so uh, now this is correct so i must remove this cross sign okay now it is correct now it is uh, extremely important to note and as I had been emphasizing here, that uh, this matrix, the six into six matrix, right now, okay, as of now, it is not symmetric. Okay, as of now, it is not symmetric. So right now, we are at the level where we have only utilized the minor symmetries. So based on that, that those minor symmetries we don't have c1 2 bar is equal to c2 1 bar so please note here uh, that if if we were to write that c1 2 bar is equal to let's put a question mark here if we had to write like this then what it basically means is that c1 1 2 2 is equal to c2 2 1 1 which basically means in terms of ijkl is that you are interchanging the positions of this ijkl okay so here you have ijkl and here you have kl ij we have not yet proved we have not even discussed whether you can do that okay so that is the that will be the topic of our uh, of the next part of our discussion uh, where we'll discuss that as part of something called the major symmetries all right thank you very much uh, I'll stop the lecture here.